Hello writers, come write with me. My name is Michaela Greenwood. I create worlds for mind adventures. Welcome to my channel, Write with Michaela. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell so you can go on this journey with me. Today is Tuesday and today we're going to discuss a few terms. I have a lot of words that start with the letter C. But unlike our last list of C words, these aren't necessarily good for relationships. Our first word is coerce or coercion, which isn't a good term for relationships at all. Uh, coerce means to persuade an unwilling person to do something by using force or threats. Or to obtain something by using force or threats. Now, before we go further, let's compare coercion to manipulation. We can understand coercion as either someone having no choice or as having no acceptable choice. Um, manipulation, on the other hand, is the steering or the influencing of the choices of others by means that might be morally problematic though not necessarily wrong in all cases. Manipulation can be and often is subtle and sometimes undetectable. Whereas with coercion, the person knows someone is forcing or threatening him or her. Now, who would be a good character to use coercion or someone to coerce people? I know you know. This is a great characteristic for your antagonist. Now, uh, leave a comment below if you have ever felt or witnessed coercion. The next C word is collaboration. And collaboration means the action of working with someone to produce or create something or to work jointly with others or together especially in an intellectual endeavor or a common goal. Notice, I did not say something good. It can be good or not. The second definition of collaboration says collaboration is traitorous cooperation with an enemy or to cooperate with or willingly assist an enemy of one's country, and especially an occupying force. Collaboration can include communication or task. I feel that we want collaboration on both sides, the antagonist and the protagonist. We want the protagonist side to collaborate. And if the antagonist side didn't collaborate, then it might make things too easy for our antagonist side and not have the struggle be enough for our, our protagonist to grow. However, I can imagine that if there was no collaboration on the antagonist side, then we would create some comical scenes. If, however, someone on the protagonist side decides to collaborate with someone on the antagonist side, then we would have a betrayer a traitor, a betrayer, or something. If it's the other way, where we have someone on the antagonist side collaborating with the protagonist side, then we have a spy to help us out or to help you out or your characters out. Of course, if there's no collaboration going on anywhere, neither side will be able to get anything done. So, leave a comment below on your latest collaborative endeavor, be it a work project or putting together a party of some kind, a graduation party, a Christmas party, whatever. You collaborated with people to put it together, and it could have been a loose collaboration like an email. Okay, here's a list of items to bring for the party, and then people put down their names. I'm bringing the cups. I'm bringing the plates. I'm bringing the roast. I'm bringing the vegetables. That's collaboration. It may not seem like it, but it's still working together to put the party on. Or if you're working on a work project, you know, I will do this part of the project. I will draw the plans for the building and I will get the materials for the building and I will get the 
uh, permits for the building. So those are collaborative endeavors that we do all the time, but we don't think of it as being collaboration. So leave a comment on your latest collaborative endeavor. Our next term is compatible. Just the sound of it makes us think that it might be good for relationships. So let's look at the definition. Compatible means of two things or people who are able to exist or occur together without conflict. A technical definition is a computer that can use software design for another make or type. Right, now, let's get away from the technical for a minute. If you are compatible with somebody or someone, you have a good relationship with them because you have similar opinions and similar interests. Some synonyms are accordant, congenial, congruent, cooperative, getting along harmoniously, having good vibes, hitting it off, like-minded, or meet on the same wavelength. That means this could be for either side, the protagonist side or the antagonist side. It doesn't mean that everyone on a side in a story get along or are compatible. But the people could collaborate for a common good without necessarily being compatible. Compatible can go into being able to finish another sentence or thought. So let's say you have a scene and your characters lose radio signal. Is there someone that knows another person so well, this team, the person on this team knows someone on that team, and they're supposed to be coordinating things with the radio. So this person here knows this person here so well that they will be able to continue the plans without the radio. That would be compatible. All right, let's look at the technical definition because I think this is very easy to understand. Is whatever tool your characters are using compatible with whatever lock they need to pick or entrance they need to pry open or engine they need to start. If you write scenes with medical information, you might want to know if the blood types are compatible. I have a sci-fi that I'm writing and there are a lot of robots in the sci-fi and the main circuit shut down or wore out in one of the robots. So the technicians tried to use a circuit from another robot. Seems like a good plan. But the different circuit was not compatible with the different robot, so it didn't work. There are lots of examples of compatibility in, in our lives. When you buy a screen protector for your phone, or you buy a case for your phone, it has to be compatible. Otherwise the camera, you know, the film will cover up the camera part or it'll cover up something that's not supposed to and it won't cover up other things. So the screen protector or the case need to be compatible. If you have a Samsung phone and an Apple cord, the Apple cord will not be compatible for you to charge your phone. It just won't work. Even electric dryers have different cords to plug in the wall. I don't know if y'all know this, but one has a three prong uh, plug and the other one has a four. But no one can use an electric dryer in a space that is for a gas dryer. Compatible is a term or idea that we have around us every day. What type of gas do you put in your car? Most of us don't use diesel gas. What type of bulb do you need in your ceiling fan? So wide, wider base or the narrow base? Even something as simple as a stapler needs staples that are compatible. So you have those little bitty staplers that go in your backpack and they take the little staplers or you have the, the desk staplers that have the standard size staples. So our child's toy needs the correct batteries. Double A batteries won't fit if you need the triple A batteries. And we have a saying. We have a saying of don't try to put a square peg in a round hole. So, this saying is telling us to use things that are compatible. 
Leave a comment below on an example of an everyday thing that needs compatibility or needs something compatible. I've given lots of examples, but there's a ton, a ton more examples. Our last term for today is compliant. Compliant means to be inclined to agree with others or obey rules, especially to an excessive degree. Acquiescence. Some sentiment nims are amenable, amenable, conformable, disposed, or willing to comply, lamb-like, meekness, and non-resistant. So let's look back at the first term, coerce or coercion. If you have a coercive person and a compliant person, then the compliant person is just going to let the coercive person completely have his or her way. There will be no questioning authority. Now, let's be clear. A compliant person isn't someone obeying commands because they're scared or they feel, fear the coercive person. Although we define the coercive person as someone using threats or force. So if you have both of these people, then at what point will the compliant person stop complying? And does the compliant person, you know, does the compliant person have a set of ethics that they won't go beyond? Okay, I'll let you have your way until this point. And um, if so, if they have that point and he or she stops complying... How will the coercive person amp up their threats or their force? See, sometimes it, it's better to get a, a compliant person deeply involved in whatever you're doing before you use too much force or too many threats. Actually, it's, it's good to, you, to try to draw people in, whatever, even if they're not a compliant person, just... Try to draw people in before you use too much force. Because sometimes you use too much force right away. People are just going to run to the hills, run to the woods. So if you kind of rope them in and then you start using the coercion on the force, then that's when you're going to have that coercion step up. But it it's going to be easier to draw in somebody that's compliant because they, they just want to please and they just go along with the program. So it would be easier to draw them in than a lot of other people. So I, I think a lot of times today people don't want to be confrontational. So they will comply to at least a certain point. Not, all, not everybody, of course. But we need to, as writers, we need to observe these things. Now, since I've set this up this way, okay, think about the main antagonist and, and one of his underlings, his or her underlings. Probably the closest underling to the antagonist is someone compliant. Because if it is someone that just feared the antagonist and then suddenly the antagonist showed weakness, that would be an opportunity to get out from under the coercion or to change the rule of law, you know, change the rulership, you know, if you have the coercive person has a weak moment, then the other person rises up, takes over, then they become the coercive person. So as one of these rulers, that's the antagonist, they don't want somebody right under them to be like that. They would rather have somebody that is compliant and not necessarily loyal, but a little more loyal than somebody that's just reacting to fear. So, in some of our stories, we don't see much of the antagonist or their underlings. But in some stories, we certainly do. In Star Wars, we, we saw scenes with Darth Vader. In Harry Potter, we mostly saw scenes with the underlings. And not necessarily Voldemort. So... Leave a comment below on a character or characters in a story or movie and show or show that display one of our terms today. Coercive, collaborative, compatible, compliant. 
and tell the basic action that demonstrates that characteristic. Join me Friday for Eleni's Pride, Breaking Point, Chapter 16, Profit Loss. Join me Tuesday for A Down Soldier, Part 3. Don't forget to visit my website, buymckella.com, and read some character bios. And send your writings and chapters to writewithmckella at gmail.com. And leave comments on your favorite characters. If you hit the like and the subscribe and the bell notification, we will continue to write together. And others will have a higher chance of finding this channel in this video. Thank you for joining me today. I really, really, really appreciate your participation. If you know someone who would like this video, then please share it with them. This is McKella with Write With McKella. Bye for now.